Does Texas have unions? I'm Charles Blaine, and this is Texas Tomorrow. Are you worried about your kids' future? You should be. You're listening to Texas Tomorrow with Charles Blaine. Join Charles as he talks about the people and issues that are affecting you and your family at the local level of government. If you ask some, they'll say that Texas has no public employee unions. They say it's because unions are able to strike, and since they can't strike in Texas, there's no union. That's the reason many defer to, and while it's true that they aren't able to strike, it's not true that striking is the only thing that qualifies an organization as a union. There's there's much more than that. So first of all, nearly all of the public associations or unions in Texas use union in their name, whether on their website or in formal documents. They call themselves unions, especially those that are teachers unions. You can find that across school districts across the state. Further, in Texas, public employee unions are granted the right to have government entities, schools, cities, counties, deduct members' dues from their paychecks before they give them out and then remit that money to the union. So essentially, they're acting as an agent of the union, a a cash collector, if you will, of their membership's dues. This also helps keep union members a part of the group and not straying too far. If they don't have to consciously think about paying those monthly dues, then they won't necessarily weigh what they're getting from their union and what it's advocating for against the cost of being a member. Out of sight, out of mind. Unions in Texas have successfully advocated for collective bargaining rights, meet and confer. They advocate for higher minimum wages for public employees. And some of the current things that we see in Texas cities today, like high public employee pension debt, is because of unions' refusal to shift from the current pension system to a more market-based one. Also, things like difficulty firing bad employees and minimum staffing requirements. These are all things that derive from union involvement in local government. And they're not simply one-off decisions from local elected officials. But there are policies that these unions have have advocated for for years, and it's also important to separate union members from their unions, because many times individual employees are at odds with the policies that their unions advocate for, too. They simply don't have the time or the resources to follow legislative or even local policy. Like most citizens, they're busy with life. So they defer to their union to represent them. All of these reasons and more leaves the question, why are Texans subsidizing union membership? What the unions advocate for might be in their best members' best interest at times, but it's not always in the taxpayers' best interest. So why are our taxing entities using public resources to be a pass-through for union dollars? It's a question many have asked over the years and one that has been allowed to continue. Some on one side of it, the side that argues in favor of keeping it, says that it makes it harder for individuals to exercise their right to be a member if you make them consciously give that money. While the other side argues that manually sending a monthly payment instead of having it automatically deducted is not stopping anyone's rights. But what we do know is that a lot of reforms that people have demanded at the local level fail at the hands of elected officials weighing union interests against the public. And ultimately, we need them determining what's in the best interests of the taxpayers first and organizations second. Thanks for tuning in for this week's episode of Texas Tomorrow. Please like, share, comment. Let us know if there's something going on in your neighborhood that you'd like us to talk about. So I hope you took something away from this. And if you did, make sure you tell a friend, a family member, share it on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, wherever you see fit. And make sure you tune in for next week's episode of Texas Tomorrow.